then James 2.24, you see that how that, you see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Well, that's a contradiction of Paul. Paul says you, you are justified by faith alone. So there you have it. James and Paul do not agree. You cannot reconcile that. There are no, well, there's gymnastics that do it, but it's flesh. It's in your flesh when you try to reconcile that. James and Paul do not agree. We go to the next one. 714 of Matthew, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Man, is that ever true? Remember who he was talking to there. And Jesus was always talking to pretty much the same people, God believing people. Jesus never went and spoke to the world. The closest he got to that was when the Romans were beating the mess out of him and he had a little conversation with Pilate. But the rest was all God believing people and almost all Jews. So he was talking to those people and amongst that group he was saying that few there be that find the gate to heaven. He wasn't saying, he wasn't dividing between the believers and the world. He was saying between the believers who trust and the believers who don't trust. The believers who believe in themselves, essentially. The religious people. Religious people believe in themselves, in their own action, their own work, their own ability to get right with God. Those are the ones that don't get through the straight gate. That's what it means. You can search that out, and I'll just say that's my opinion. <laughs> because people get mad when I say that's just what it means. I get mad sometimes when people say that. But that is my opinion. Only God can really show you if it's true or not. But I think he'll show you the same thing he showed me. I could be wrong, because I'm not God. 2 Corinthians 2.9 For to this end also did I write, that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. So, if, if Paul, I don't want to belabor this too much, but if Paul is saying that they are to be in all things, obedient in all things means obedient to the law, then there is no new covenant. There is no new covenant. I think sometimes people think, we say, oh, don't even read the red. Don't even pay attention to what Jesus said because he taught the law. No. Read what Jesus said. Read what he says about the law because he taught what the law is really about. And once you understand what the law is really about, then you can start to get his grace and his mercy. But as long as you think the law was given so you could obey it, you're never going to understand his mercy because you're never really going to need it, need it in your mind because you're going to become convinced that, well, as, soon, as long as I obey, I'll be okay with God. That's never going to happen. Man was given everything. Man was given dominion over the world. Man lost that dominion to the enemy of God and man. Therefore, according to God's own setup, a man had to get it back. So, what is he going to do? He says this to Isaiah. He said, he looked around, he saw there was no man. So his own arm brought salvation for him. He wants salvation. He's not willing that any should perish. But none of us could do this. So he became the man. The only man that could do that. And he came here. And he's coming here himself to bring you to himself. That's what Christ does. That's what the man Christ Jesus. The man Messiah. Yahweh is salvation. Or if you want to say Jesus Christ, say in that order, the man, Yahweh, is salvation. The Messiah, that's, that's the work he did, he, did, he did in that ministry. God can do more than one thing at once and still be one person.